Welcome to worship with the North Yorkshire Coast on this Easter Sunday. Our preacher today is Bruce Clark, a local preacher and member at Burniston, and Colin Adamson offers our Bible reading and intercessions. He's one of our circuit stewards and worship leader at Westborough. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you and praise you for this brand new day, especially for this special day when we celebrate not only the new life we see all around us, but more importantly, the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has brought us new life and an eternal hope. Thank you that his life on earth and 
his death on the cross have been vindicated and we can say with confidence Jesus is alive and with equal confidence our sins are forgiven for his namesake. May all creation celebrate and may all heaven rejoice and may we all join with praise from our hearts to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, we confess that we have often not behaved in ways which reflect trust in your love. We've tried to do things our own way. We've trusted in our own righteousness. We have held you at a distance because of an unhealthy fear. Consequently, we have said things we didn't want to say. We've done things we didn't want to and entertained unloving thoughts. Before the unfailing love revealed in Jesus, we humbly bow and ask you to penetrate our hearts with grace and to lift us up with your embrace that we may know afresh the power of your love that never fails to heal and to make us more like Jesus. Let's just spend a short time bringing ourselves before God and those things that he may highlight in our lives that we need to bring. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness and unchanging love. Help us now to learn more of you during the rest of this time together. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
reading from the Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Alleluia! Hear the Gospel of Christ. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Alleluia! Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of their tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still do, did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she went, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Alleluia! This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Alleluia!
Good morning and happy Easter. What a wonderful day when we celebrate our risen Saviour Jesus Christ. And my prayer for you is that you experience his risen presence through this day and every day of your life. I'm going to begin uh, a story that I used to tell in the schools. It's a story uh, written by a lady called Patricia St. John. It's, it's uh, written St. John. Um, it's a story of a lady, we'll call her Margaret, who is a missionary in Africa. And she goes up north to the place of Fez to see a friend. But while she's there, she hears her mother is very ill and she needs to get down uh, over the river uh, back to see her mother. But unfortunately, the rain has been coming down all night. Reports have been coming back that the river is so flooded that cars can't get across. So she decides that she's going to go the small road over the mountains and hopefully the uh, river will be crossable. But as she's going across the mountains, it's so precarious in her little car, the mist has descended and she can't see. But as she's coming down to the place where she needs to cross the river, already cars and lorries are coming up, shaking their heads, putting their thumbs down and saying, no way across. So she can't do a thing about it. So she goes to the bottom with the intention maybe of turning round. But she thought, well, maybe, maybe if I am, um, if I uh, have a look myself. So she takes her shoes off and uh, locks the car and starts uh, walking into the river. The villagers are so excited about the whole thing. There's uh, hundreds of them watching all the events happening. But there she goes across the river and some are shouting out, be careful, you'll die or Thing and things like that, but she manages uh, to get some distance across the river. And by this time, the mist has uh, prevented the people from seeing her and they can't see her. She's disappeared in the mist. But as she's looking down, the river is still only up to her ankles and she's relieved to find by the time she gets to the other side, it's perfectly crossable for the cars and lorries. Uh, and so she starts walking back. Well, rumour had now been spread amongst the villagers that the lady had been drowned and uh, that uh, she'd gone foolishly into the river and that was the end of her. But she, uh, she uh, as they were looking out over the river, who would appear from the mist? The mist? Uh, and as she comes out through the mist, they're amazed. The lady's alive. Well, of course, you can see the Christian significance of this. And uh, furthermore, when she gets there, the, there are more cars and lorries that want to cross. And she said, well, come on, we'll all go over as a convoy. And they did. And she led them across the river. And so Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Uh, he's gone over to the other side and he's come back over the river and he's telling us it's OK. If you follow me, I can take you across. And so we thank God for this. And this would have been the immediate revelation, I think, that the early church would have known uh, that Jesus had conquered death. This man who was once dead is now alive. The one who we loved, the one who we followed is alive. And as time progressed, things will have, uh, questions will have arisen. Uh, uh, interpretations of what happened uh, at the cross and at the resurrection in the life of Jesus uh, books were written, the Gospels were written, and theology developed, and councils were uh, held about who is this Jesus. And of course, some of these questions are very important and have helped to develop what, how we understand the Easter story today. Well, I'm going to look at three of the questions that may have been raised, uh, and well, definitely were raised, uh, over history. Uh, and I'm just going to give them, really, there are so many views on it, but I'm going to share what God has put on my heart today. And so the three questions will be, well, who is this God? Who is this Jesus uh, that died from on the cross and is risen from the dead? And what is the purpose of it? Why is Jesus raised from the dead? And how does the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ apply to us ordinary human beings today? Well, the first one, uh, it tells us in the Bible, uh, Paul tells us that, um, that he emptied himself. Jesus emptied himself uh, uh, 
at the uh, when he went from came from heaven became a servant went to the cross and he emptied himself and uh, uh, Wesley has written a hymn and you probably can remember it uh, I'll let you work out which one it was emptied himself of all but love uh, and I like that he emptied himself of everything but emptying himself which is the act of self-renunciation the act of love and so Jesus came to show us what God is like that God was a God of selfless love now many portions and times in the early scriptures we could have understood differently but Jesus came uh, to declare <coughs> he died to declare how much God loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now this concept uh, of God, the cosmic moralist, the one with the tick boxes, uh, that if we get it right, well, we're okay, but woe betide us if we get them wrong, get anything wrong. Uh, this uh, idea of God that's always watching that we get it right. And we live our lives sometimes with a God like that because we can't get it out of our system but Jesus came to to get it out of our system and um, the controlling God the inflexible jealous judge holding his vengeance ever ready someone wrote the severity of the judge can obscure the goodness of the creator and how many times have we held an image of God which obscures his goodness from us. The human face of the father of mankind can be covered with the impassive mask of a magistrate. And Jesus wanted to take away this distant uh, God to one who loves us as a father intimately. But it's a hard thing. We, we find it struggle. We beat ourselves up. We judge ourselves too much. We're too cruel, too hard on ourselves. And God wants to say, look, I love you. I love you unconditionally. You don't have to do anything to earn my love. You are loved right now, right where you are, and couldn't be loved anymore. There's a poem I came across that says, love ever gives, forgives, outlives, and ever stands with open hands. And while it lives, it gives. For this is love's prerogative, to give and give and give. And Jesus did this. He did this. He gave and gave and gave, even unto death. And he did this to show us how much God loves us. I don't know if you remember, but the last time <coughs> I spoke, if you listen to it, I talked about why God looked at Jesus and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And it wasn't because he got everything right or ticked all the boxes. God was delighted in Jesus because he perfectly reciprocated the unconditional love of the Father with unconditional surrender and commitment and all the perfect love, all the perfect love that the Father had bestowed upon him, he reflected back. And so when we think of the resurrection, the resurrection is this consummation of this perfect pleasure of the father that he wasn't going to leave his son to die on a cross and to perish forever but because of the love of God for his son and the love of the son for his father he was raised from the dead there's an old book I've I bought on a whim the second hand bookshop by a uh, fellow called Andre Gide and it's a book called Fruits of the Earth and to be honest I haven't really found much in it but it's a nice little book to pick up and just read little bits now and again but I came across this quite surprisingly in the book and he said this every affirmation is accomplished in abnegation that is every good thing is accomplished in letting go of, of things everything you resign within you he says will come to life all affirmation of self is self-destroying. All self-denial is self-affirming. And you can see Jesus said this, that if we deny ourselves, we'll live. Without sacrifice, he said, there's no resurrection. Nothing grows and blooms 
save by giving. All you try to save in yourself wastes and perishes. And he says, how do you know the fruit is ripe? Because it leaves the bough. All things ripen for the giving's sake. And in the giving are consummated. And that kind of sums it up for me in what Jesus did. He gave himself so much. But in his giving, dropping from the bough like a fruit. And dying like a seed on the ground. This was consummated through the power of the Holy Spirit. To the pleasure of the Father in raising Jesus from the dead. Why did Jesus rise? That's our next little question. Well, I want to say just a little about this, but simply to say this, that it's the triumph of God's love over hatred and fear. So while all hell was let loose upon Jesus, he never stopped loving. He never stopped giving and giving and giving and cried, forgive them for they know not what they do. And in the resurrection of Jesus, we see that that love, although it appeared at the time when he died on the cross, that hatred and evil had won. On the third day, he rose again and that proved that love had won over all the hatred and evil that was thrown upon him. Says the hymn writer, death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my saviour, he tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord, and up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes, and he lives, what was he, arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign, and you can sing it with me if you like, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Now, I used to dabble with uh, uh, web design and stuff like that, still do a bit, and also I used to enjoy doing um, uh, moving images and so I created this thing about the resurrection where the cross, I did a picture of the cross and then all these nasty words were sort of descended in the darkness into the cross, uh, you know, like hatred, fear, shame, guilt and all, all the, you know, the bad stuff. And then uh, the, the, the picture was replaced with the, the grave and the stone and then the stone rolled away and then the uh <laughs> i really enjoyed making this and then the whole grave burst and exploded and all the little bits of rock disappeared into the distance and i was just thinking about that and i thought well actually this was not what happened <laughs> there was no dramatic explosion there's something counterintuitive in the way the resurrection has been recounted to us it was like just jesus meeting mary and other people meeting in this case meeting Mary in the garden there's a, a sort of gentleness a calmness there's no fireworks it's quite unassuming in a way and given that this was the very overcoming of death itself our natural tendency is to make it something more to dramatize it uh, but to do so seems to be according to the biblical narrative anyway unnecessary we don't need to hype it up it's just something almost quite ordinary as Jesus is meeting people uh, risen from the dead. And I put the paradox of the cross is equaled also by that of the resurrection. At the cross we know that the man who died, he couldn't swat a fly off his face and it was the epitome of weakness. But Paul tells us in, in the cross and we know in our hearts that this is the very manifestation of God's power. So who would have thought? That's a paradox indeed, isn't it? But it's similar in a way by the resurrection. This momentous event of the resurrection is, uh, is portrayed to us in such almost an ordinary way. It's as though that the power that we are witnessing is something totally other than what we are used to attaching to this word power. Can I suggest that what we are attaching to the word power here is in fact to be more appropriately termed love in all its self-sacrifice, in all its purity, all its selfless giving, all its abundance and uh, 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 uninhibitedness, if that's a word. The, the very power of God is his love. We say his, his love is as great as his power. I'm saying in a way that his love is his power. This is the, love, the selfless love of, of creation. The selfless love of becoming flesh. The selfless love on the cross. And the selfless love 
displayed when Jesus uh, was raised from the dead and meeting all the people and is now at the right hand of the God. It's all love and that is God's power. It's love that is the power of the cross and it's love that's the power of the resurrection. And it's that same love that's at work in us as Christians today. And what does it mean? This final question, if you're, not, if you're still with me, what does it mean for us today? Well, of course, we know the future. It's a future hope uh, for us. And that's exciting. And that uh, the, the river's been crossed and Jesus one day will take us over that river. Uh, and uh, we, we also have a foretaste of that. That risen life of Jesus is communicated to us by the Holy Spirit. So the heavenly life that Jesus enjoys in heaven is, is in our ordinary living experience, which is quite amazing. I think Paul says in Romans 8, uh, he says uh, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies by the same spirit. And so that's exciting. We've got the future ahead of us secure, but we also have a, a present victory as well. So what does it mean for us today? Well, let's just think that if we've understood Jesus to be selfless love, you know, he emptying, uh, self emptying love, he giving of himself, we could say that actually mankind is quite the opposite. Uh, we are full of self. We're self-preserving, self-seeking, self-centred, self whatever. It's all self, isn't it? I is the word, the letter that's at the centre of sin. The, so Jesus came to reverse that in us so that uh, he wanted to save us, as it were, from ourselves through the power of his love, that his love would so captivate us that we would want to love him to, and to love the Father by the power of the Spirit. So there's a, he came not just for a future hope, but for a present transformation for us to be like God. The downward pull of human nature is eclipsed by the upward pull of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And like the ordinariness and the paradox of the death and uh, resurrection of Jesus it's part of our, it's to become part of our ordinary lives now this this man uh, Andre Gide I won't I won't read it I'll leave it but the one thing he, he talks about the fruit falling from the tree he said that it, let it die that you may live and he says, I know that except it die, it abide it alone. And you know he's talking about Jesus. And then he cries out, O oh Lord, grant me not to wait for death in order to die. Which is rather a dramatic thing to say. What does it mean to die before you die? And I've often thought about this. And um, it's the call of God to renounce ourselves in the small things of life. The little things that happen in our lives that call for that make us go all self-centred when we've been upset by somebody and we've got our rights and we shall fight back for what's ours or when we're irritated by the small things that happen maybe you could be irritated with me you know I could be but I can't see you but it's the little things in life that are it's our joy and our privilege through Jesus' power to let go of so that we're constantly renouncing ourselves, dying that little death, as it were, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ may be proved in us. Um, I'm going to finish with a story. It's a story of three moths and a flame. And the flame's there, and the first moth goes into the, towards the flame and uh, gets a bit warm, it thinks I'm off. And so the flame, the, the moth goes. The second moth turns up and gets his wings singed by the flame. And he thought, whoa, that's too close for me. And he flies off. But the third moth flies right into the flame and gets consumed. Now, you know, it's a bit of a strange story in a way to be encouraging people to fly into flames and die. But you know where I'm going with this. That it's at the cross where the fire of God's love it said in his and his resurrection 
uh, power, the fire, where we can afford to throw ourselves into that fire and know his risen presence in our lives, to be those that are so passionate for God that to grow in love is to grow in that readiness to let go of our selfish concerns. To grow in love is the, not only the readiness, uh, but the speed with which we do it as we, uh, as we appropriate the power of his death and as we rise with him daily in his resurrection. It was Paul who said that we are crucified with Christ. It's already happened, but he said, I die daily. And so we take these things that we know are con a contradiction of the selflessness of the cross. And we bring ourselves with it to that cross in order that, well, not even in order, as Paul said, behold, with no ulterior motives, but we just go there. And he said, behold, he said, uh, we live. Dying, he said, behold, we live, that we may live out the resurrection life through selfless love, that we may touch others with that love in our family, our friends, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbours, wherever we go. We are there with the love of Jesus, with unconditional love, and we're doing it through the power of his resurrection to the glory of the Father. And it's all a part of our ordinary lives. I'm not trying to sensationalise it. It's quite unsensational, very ordinary, but truly uh, life impacting in ways that we'll only know in eternity. So God bless you this Easter day and for the rest of your lives down here. And may you grow in this love and may the resurrection of Jesus Christ be more real to you as you grow in love. God bless you. Amen.
the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, in your love, the Church throughout the world, your Church, the Church universal, and we pray for our Yorkshire North and East District, and this, our Yorkshire Coast Circuit, and all its churches. We remember those recently baptised and confirmed, and those who minister to others. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love the world you have made. Those who seek a fair and proper use of the world's resources. Those who strive for justice and peace amongst the nations. And we continue to remember the conflict in Palestine and in Israel, the land where you walked yourself. And we continue to remember the situation in Ukraine and Russia, the situation in Syria in the Yemen, in Myanmar, and in many other places of your world, the world that you created. We pray for your peace, that you may rule throughout. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your love. We remember in your love those who suffer, the victims of violence and injustice. for those who are ill, for those who mourn. We remember those at this time known to us who need your prayer. And we remember those known only to you who need prayer. We pray that your hand of comfort, of healing, may rest upon all who need your presence this Easter time. May all in need find comfort, strength and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, hear us in your love. We remember in your love those who have died. those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. 
Lord of life. Hear us in your love. And what we pray, Father God, for others, we pray for ourselves. You know each and every one of us. You know our needs at this time. And we pray that you would meet them, that you would come to us and make yourself known to us this Easter time. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Gracious God, we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. <laughs> 